We are now recording and we are going to share the screen. And we're gonna let Myatt in here. Close that down, close that down, open this. Not if you can see now the Bagby assignments for Wednesday, May 13th, excellent. Okay, so uh, Lena asked this this morning in the private channel, and don't forget that pri private channel is exactly for that. We check it constantly. Yes, if you can get into iStation, and there have been some problems with it, go and take May's assessment for iStation. Do that before the week ends. Now, uh, today's chapters, chapter six and seven, are available for you. We have six questions, and some of these questions just require a one word answer. So you could just write a one word answer for some of these. What does the little prince love to watch? Why does the little prince think he can watch a sunset anytime? What is the little prince feeling much of the time? Yeah, the little prince also is very precious. He's, uh, he's uh, very emotional uh, and he's very child childlike in, in the fact that we don't know how old he is. He might be ancient but he is very sensitive. What is the pilot working on that he thinks will help him get out of the desert? Why does the little prince become enraged at the pilot in chapter seven? And it's pretty funny stuff, why he gets enraged. And what does Antoine de saint Exupéry call the land of tears? Here comes Damien. Now I wanna show you something on the screen that is gonna be very helpful for some of you. If you are having trouble understanding the book, I'm going to give you this link on your Teams page today and on tomorrow's daily assignment. It's called Lit Charts. It goes through every single chapter and gives a summary of every chapter. And then it, it, it talks about the themes of the book, the characterizations, what the different things mean. So if you're having trouble, this book is too weird for me. I don't understand it. Go to this site and you'll be able to make a lot more sense of it if you're having trouble in the reading of the book. So lit charts, and that will be made available to you and that, will, that should really help. Moving down, okay, so Mr. B share the little, yeah, I did that, the summary page, good. If you haven't checked out the California Gold Rush thing yet, please click on that, it's pretty cool. Uh, you know how much I love history and it will show you uh, just why the California Gold Rush was so important not just for the goal, but for what it did to the country and convincing people that they go all the way across the country. And we'll talk a, lot, a little bit about, well, a little bit more about that <laughs> at the end. Uh, if somebody has something to share, poetry from last week, your narrative writing, um, or anything from the books that you're reading right now, you will have an, a chance to share that today. So be ready with that share. If you want to share some of your narrative story and some of your poetry or about something about the books that you're reading on your own, please feel free to do that. Again, these words right here were developed by educators that collected these 75 words and said, yes, they should know a lot more than these 75 words, but these words are really important to make sure that they have down pat, both for spelling and vocabulary. That's why you're using them in sentences. So using the punctuation marks. So you've got your punctuation jungle that you can use, and then you can use the punctuation marks. Here's an example. My dad, and here's parentheses, my dad, when I was young, said a described detail helps me understand something. You've got the period, you've got the quotation marks, you've got the comma, you've got a parentheses. After the party was over, the birthday girl cried. That should say girl, sorry. This example is not in your daily assignment, by the way. After the party was over, the birthday girl cried, everyone came but my best friend, sign, quotation marks. So there you have the, the dashes period, the quotation marks. So make sure you're using the words, compare through detail, and then tomorrow we'll do the next 10. Now we've read the first two columns, Monday and Tuesday, today is Wednesday. So everyone unmute yourself right now. I am unmuted. 
And here we go. I'm going to say the word, and then you're going to say the word. Invitation. 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 Irritate. We'll stop right there. That's Damien. Um, the, the person that feels the need to do this, it's a real issue with you. You need, to start think, you need to think about yourself and think, why do I have the need to draw attention to myself without anybody knowing me. that I'm doing this? Who is it? It's not He's even me either. Yes, He's erased it. the marks. I'm feeling it's Damien because he's doing it in Mr. It's Dirt. not me. <laughs> okay, thank you. Irritate. 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 That's irritate. ironic that irritate came up, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Very Marine. 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 Mend. 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 Multiply. 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 Nervous. 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 Occur. 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 Opposite. Opposite. Passage. 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 Patient. Patient. Peer. 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 That means people that are your age, your peers. Persuade. 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 Pleasant. 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 Frank. 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 Again, Frank. another ironic word based upon the, you know, what just happened. Predict. Predict. Purpose. Purpose. Recognize. Recognize. Region. 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 And repair. Repair. Now again, some of you might be thinking, but I know these words. Well, that would be a great big thumbs up. But these were just something that I found uh, that was uh, a really nice example of a set of words that you need to know the spelling, the meaning, but more importantly, how to use them in a sentence. Moving on. Your independent reading, 20 minutes a day. And again, when we get to the share point, you'll be able to share something about your book if you have something. This is the same also, six grades of, six, six grades of trait writing. No, it's six traits of great writing, Mr. Bagby. And we're gonna have something in addition to this, but these will never go away in your school studies in your writing. Because as you move through all your grade levels, you're always going to be doing reading and writing, whether you're in math, science, history, or whatever class, or reading and writing classes, you're going to have to be able to write with good traits, good ideas, solid organization, good word choice. It sounds like you, you have good grammar in it and punctuation, and your sentences flow nicely. Now, in addition to that, we have keys to effective writing that was developed by an author. You have a frustrated boy there, a frustrated girl here that is like, oh no, I got to write, I can't stand it. What do I write, what do I do? Well, here are some keys to effective writing. And I've said this forever, and in fact, I know I've said it to you. If you want to be a good writer, you have to be a good reader. You cannot be a good reader a good writer if you don't read. It's kind of like, I want to be a good car mechanic. So you never look at car parts, you never study them, you never find out about them. That doesn't make any sense, does it? I want to be a marine biologist, but you don't give a hoot about fish or mammals of the sea or the oceans, but I want to be a marine biologist. No, you have to be dedicated to reading to become a great writer because when you read all kinds of material, that pattern, those patterns of good writing become part of your thinking. So you start recognizing good writing because you read it all the time. And when you do that, you essentially become a better writer. So read a lot and read wisely, which means you're not just reading Captain Underpants every day, okay? You're reading a variety of things and you're reading things that challenge you. Uh, find your voice and always be you. Now, I'm going to say something opposite to that that might not make any sense. If you want to find out what your voice is, try writing like somebody else. See if you can write like somebody else. See if you can write like somebody, like an author you know. So when you read your writing based upon trying to sound like somebody else, you'll be able to tell that doesn't sound like me. When somebody reads your writing out loud, it should sound like you. It should sound like your voice. It should sound like it's coming from your brain. 
Mr. Always be yourself. Writing doesn't have to be planned, although organization is great. Sometimes I sit down and an idea will pop into my head. And 30 minutes later, I've written a, what I feel is a really good poem. I didn't plan I it. I didn't organize it. It just was there. So sometimes writing doesn't have to be planned at all. It's just an inspiration. You need to have an ending. Uh, let me give you a good strategy. Here we go again. Stop. Please. You know, I, I've done my best not, actually, if, if, if I look into this, because I can, I really have just tried to trust you guys. But here's the deal. I can find out who's doing that. I just have chosen not to. Because I just want you to not do it. I don't want to get you, you in trouble. But please stop doing that. Anyway, here's what authors do. This is a good strategy. You want to write a book. You want to write a story. You come up with the ending first. You think, this is how the story is going to end. So I know how it's going to end. So how am I going to get my characters to that ending? How am I going to put them through all these different types of adventures and events and conflicts and character development and plot and uh, settings and the mood? How will I get them to where I want them to be? That's a very good strategy with any kind of writing is you think how I want it to end. So that's a good step. Uh, we all should know what frenemy means. It's a, a combination of two words, friend and enemy, your frenemy. Nobody likes to be told that they made a mistake. Nobody likes to be told that their writing has errors in it. But it's your best friend because it makes your writing more clear when you will become a careful editor. And again, one of the best ways of editing your work is to have somebody else read it. So when we get to our share point of writing our narrative, I want some of you to, if you can, share your writing and I'll read it out loud to you and to everybody else. Write a list of ideas if you can't come on. Uh, there's nothing that will ever take away the power of brainstorming. Brainstorming means you just sit down, you don't try to think of anything, you just, whatever pops in your head, you start writing it down and you start typing it. Whatever pops in, you just start writing it out. That's brainstorming. Uh, sometimes you can focus on a specific idea, like you want to write about space, so you think of everything you can think about space. If you want to write about uh, oceans, you think everything you can think about oceans. So brainstorming. Keep it simple, but not too simple. Don't try to overcomplicate it, but make it um, not just so simple that we don't really understand and can picture exactly what you're trying to say. Don't be afraid to try something different. Stretch yourself. Try sentence structures that you might not feel comfortable with. And don't be afraid to share your work. All right, so we'll move on. We're coming up to share time, so please be patient if you want to share something. Gifted thinking skills today. Believe me, there are way more triangles in this figure than you, can, than you think. Way more. I, when I looked at the answer to this, because I tried to figure it out myself, I was, I was wrong. I didn't find them all. So there's way more triangles in here than you think. You'll be surprised. I was. This one, all of these arrows pointing in different directions have a pattern. So if they do have a pattern, you should be able to identify whether this arrow points up, down, left, or right. Or you can say north, south, west, and east, if you were looking at a map. And then a little math one there. There's a pattern to these numbers, 17, 11, 8, 15, 4, 10, 13. What goes there? Don't say it out loud. So three gifted thinking skills today. Like I told you in our ancient studies, we're doing a review for the last couple of weeks of everything that we've learned about ancient civilizations. So today it's a nice little video for kids about ancient Egypt. What's the coolest thing? Just one thing that you've learned that we've learned about ancient Egypt to you? What's the coolest thing? Maybe it's the, uh, the coolest thing to me when I was your age, because I, I did ancient Egypt in elementary school and loved it uh, and never lost my love for it. But the coolest thing to me was, was when you died and they took your heart and they measured it against a feather. And if it was heavier than a feather, you were in trouble. And if it was lighter than a feather, everything was cool. 
So I thought that was really, it was scary, really? but it was really cool. Um, now I want you to look at this quizzes. Oh, geography, the games again. If you keep doing these, I promise you, your knowledge of geography will go up uh, the term is exponentially. In, in other words, you'll be amazed at how much you learn. The quizzes today is California Gold Rush. Here's the code. But if you can't, if you don't see when you go to quizzes, the, the quiz pop up for you, it means that you need to have another code from me. So let me know and I'll give you another code so that you get re-entered into the system. And then all you have to do is enter your email. Um, on this family fun. Now, on family fun, since the beginning that yeah, I've included this, every family fun idea has come from this little <laughs> brain of mine. And I think I've come up with some pretty good ideas for family fun. Every single one of them came from here. Because I wanted to yeah, think of things well. that would be different from what you've done in the classroom and something that you could yeah. do with your mom and dad, your brothers and sisters, et cetera. Um, and I just think it's a really cool thing. And today's is really awesome to me. You have to think, close your eyes, act like you're going up into space and look down on your neighborhood and see if you can think in a half mile radius around my house, is there a Publix? Is there a church? Is there a park? Is there a lake? Is there a baseball field? Is there a department store? Can you think of what's around your place just by closing your eyes and picturing it? And once you do that, then go to Google Maps, type in your address, and then type in the actual view of the world that's taken from okay. satellites and see it, it, it matches up with what you thought was there. The other thing with Google Maps, and man, you guys have so many tools for geography that if, you know, we didn't have any of these tools. You can go on a street in your house and you can do the street view and you can literally travel around your whole neighborhood like you're driving your car. You can go anywhere you want in the entire country like you're driving your car, like you're actually driving and you can see places the way they look because those Google things are going around with those cameras all the time updating. So I think that's awesome, but you know, I am a teacher. Same avatar as Frankie. Uh, I am a teacher, so these things are awesome to me. That's, that's how we are, you know. Um, fun facts of the day, the gold rush was the largest mass migration in US history. Why? There's gold in their heels. More people, now get this, if you drove to California, it would seem like it would take forever, because it does. It's a long drive. They didn't have cars. They didn't have trains. They didn't get aboard a, a, a plane, a jet, and fly over. Even a, even a jet flight. When I went to LA for the first time, I felt like I was on that plane forever. No, they got into covered wagons with horses. And for months and months, with all their own supplies, hunting along the way, finding water along the way, they traveled clear across the country, and tens of thousands of people went to California in hopes of striking it rich. People would sail ships around South America because there was no Panama Canal. You couldn't cut through the shortcut. You had to go all the way around South America, all the way around to the coast of California. And so many people did that, that the leftover ships that were abandoned, the wood was used to build San Francisco. Lots, a lot of ships. But imagine the dedication to do that. The ironic thing in that, the really funny thing about that, very few people actually become, became super rich in the gold rush. Very few. But you knew who, who became rich? It wasn't the people looking for gold. It's for the people that thought with their brains and thought, I'm going to go to California and I'm going to own a shop and give everyone the supplies they need. The people that really established themselves in California weren't the gold seekers, it was the business people. And the people that were supplying the people that were there because when people show up in a place, they expect, they expect some place to stay, they expect some place to get food, they expect some place to get clothing. So all the people that went out there to service the gold rush people were the people that actually became quite wealthy. 
I think that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I think it's smart. And the gold rush attracted immigrants from all around the world. There's nothing like a gold rush. And it's happened in, in, uh, throughout history. When people discover gold, people get what's called gold fever. And they will do anything to get that gold. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's pretty, it's, it's, it's pretty okay. fascinating stories uh, around the world about how gold can both be something wonderful and how gold can be something that can corrupt your very soul because you, you do anything to get it. All right, so now it's share time. We have three different shares. You can share your narrative, you can share your um, poetry, or you can share something about books that you're reading, or you can ask any questions that you want. So if you want to, I'm going to mute all and then allow Mila. you to unmute yourself. So if you want to unmute yourself and you want to share, please go right ahead right now. Mr. Mackey? Yes, Mila. I made a poem. It was, it's very strange. Are you gonna post it? Um, yes, I'm going to. Okay. Can I share my screen? Yeah. Yeah, I have, uh, I have it on mm -hmm. where you can share your screen. I think so. Let me double check. And then Mila can no, go. Okay. Can there I go, go after Mila? Now you can. Okay. There it is. It's kind of strange. One day I was walking at a park and I saw a dog bark. That dog was barking at the lark. Then I realized why the lark was there. The lark had, had accidentally eaten a hare. That hare was really small and bare, was really a small and bare hare. So I wrote this poem in the park so I could catch some fresh air. <laughs> so you have the air rhyme all throughout it. Let me give you one recommendation. You have this written here like a paragraph. If you want it to look more like a poem, you would put one line at a time. One day it's I was walking at the park and I saw a dog bark. Next line. That dog was it's, barking at a lark. And you it's kind you of have both. Have hmm? It's kind of both, so I don't okay. think I really want to change it. Okay, who else would like to share? Me, Mila. Mila, go ahead. Do you mind if I share a drawing I've actually been working on? We're here to look. It's really light. It is very light. Uh, boy, that's hard to see. Is that a dog? It's a, it's a dragon. The way. Oh, okay. Make it a little it's darker. It's just really so light. light to see it. Mila, it's just super I, light. Mila, I heard that they're making a Wings of Fire Netflix series. Cool. Dragons never lose their appeal. I sent you a request. Dragons have been popular in cultures for tens of thousands of years. The idea of dragons. It's Max's turn. Max, I think I would be a rain wing. Can I screen share? Yep. And then it's Wyatt's turn. I would really love to see some of your narratives. Anybody have a narrative to share? Oh, you want me to share my poetry? Well, I already no, you can share your poetry, but I would really love to see somebody sharing your narratives because we had three people in my homeroom share uh, their narratives so far, and they were amazingly great. Uh, um, so right now I'm reading the Odyssey. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So one of the gods is coming down to Rome because they're angry uh, that um, people are thinking that it's not their fault because of their bad um, doings. And they think that it's the gods' fault. And... <laughs> so are these are these uh, elementary versions of these two? 
Uh, yes, okay. they are. All right. Anybody else have something to share? Wyatt, 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 Wyatt. Me. Go ahead, Wyatt. So this is something from my book, um, my nonfiction book. Um, it's a card book. It's one of the tricks. Oh. So say, so say you pick a card you decide to pick. This card. Remember that card, okay? We got it. Don't say Four it. Of diamonds. Okay, don't. Okay. Do it again, Wyatt. I, hear I said, don't say it out loud. We all know. We all can see it. Yeah. Oh, do sorry. not say it. Do not tell me what it is. Got I don't it. Know what cards? Sorry, wait. Sure. I know. I can't see. Put that back in the deck. I put that back in the deck. Now, wait. Can I will just. Can I will just start messing the deck up. This. Hmm. Now you see the cards, they're completely mixed up. But now, the only card that is not messed up is your card. Was that your card? Yes. Yes. Oh, I know that trick. I've seen it yes, before. Same. Don't explain it. A magician never gives it. I will not. I won't. I know it. I, I know it. I... Don't Man, explain why? it. I, Man, said I'm not. I said I'm not. Okay. Is there anyone in here that has a narrative that they're working on to share? Because if, if nobody starts sharing, I'm going to start assigning shares because I really want to see what you're working on. Because like I said, you're going to have at the end of this last three week period, three pieces of writing that I'm going to be sharing with your fourth grade teachers so they can get an idea of where you are in your writing ability. So it's very important that you uh, put that up so we can help you make it better. I don't know how to share screen. You just go down to where it says share screen and then you tap on your file. Um, uh, that's it? No. Hmm. Maybe I need to open it first. Hmm. Oh, open. Hmm. Oh, yes, yeah, sent you a friend request. Um. You know how Damien left the call, right? I guess he did. I think he's just annoyed because people were saying that he was the person who was drawing on the screen, even though he wasn't. Well, we don't know who was drawing until I investigated. I'm about to get oh, you know who drew it. Oh, it's not me. It's not me. Okay, uh, again, let's ask specifically. Arjun, do you have anything to share? Can I share next time? A what? Can I share next meeting? Yes. Phoebe, and do you have something to share? Yeah, but I'm trying on my computer to see if I can share it. It's not loaded. Okay. Not Mila shared. shared already. Upton. Uh, no, no. I'm trying to find that narrative paragraph. Lena. Um, I already shared. You did Anderson? I guess I do have a little project I want to show you. How about Chloe? I'm working on something that I would like to show you. He wants well, a narrative really, paragraph. Um, right now, I'm really focused on having one person. Because what it means, what, what you're saying to me, what it seems to be is that you haven't written anything yet. That's the, no, that's the written the narrative in my head. Thing. Progress on my narrative. None of my four I do have my three portfolio to share. I just don't feel comfortable with other people reading it. Well, that's what we have to do, just like in class. So Vaiga, do you have anything? Did I ask everybody? Swat? Mm -hmm. Mr. Bagby. My narrative story. 
Go ahead. Okay. The title's called, I'm not finished yet, but this is just like how I like so far. The title Oops. is A Bold Life Changing Girl. Intro. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Alexa, and she was a nice, loving girl. She was in seventh grade in middle school with the living with an older sister, mom, and American Shepherd puppy named um, Coco. Her dad died with cancer when she was three years old. When she started kindergarten, everyone was bullying her and treated her very badly. But as she got older, she she was famous in her school because of having no dads. Then she got used to it. Chapter one, mom's sad death. One day, Alexa came back from school and dropped her bag down yelling, hello, anybody home? Then I heard three ambulances leaving my house. All at once, my sister Allie came rushing towards me and Coco behind her. Where's mom? I asked. She passed out, Allie said. Oh my God, I totally freaked out. I was worried about mom, 100%. A few weeks later, I heard my mom on the news saying how people want my mom to die, but I still had hope. The doctor called me and still and said to, my, to come over to the hospital. So I told Allie the story and she bring me, Coco, and herself there in her car. Once we got on the bridge, it was huge traffic. Everyone was panicking. Just like that, my mom broke of loneliness and died. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Any comments?